The story of Joey Caminale is a cautionary tale. The successful 26-year-old from Connecticut did what many young people do every weekend. They go clubbing in New York's hot meatpacking district. Caminale ended the night at an after party that seemed just like any other. But this time, he disappeared. Aaron Moriarty reports. Joey's missing. He's somewhere. He's got to be somewhere. Hey, where's Joey? Have you heard from Joey? Joey Cominelli's father, Pat, knew his 26-year-old son well, and at first, he wasn't worried when he couldn't reach him on Sunday morning, November 13, 2016. Joey had gone clubbing with friends the night before. A bunch of people were going out to New York City. That night, we went to the Gilded Lily. The Gilded Lily is in the meatpacking district. It's a lounge. He has club type music. 3.30 or so, the night was ending, so everyone exits. I remember Joey on my left, and these girls were looking at him a certain way, and he was looking back at me and just smiling like, you know, that he was interested. Stephen Nasso says he drove his girlfriend back home to Stamford, Connecticut, while Joey went off with those women and some guys he had just met to a small party in the exclusive Manhattan neighborhood known as Sutton Place. You're not expecting an issue in Sutton Place. Sutton Place is a, is a beautiful place to live. The party was in apartment 4C at the Grand Sutton. It was the home of 25-year-old James Rackover, the son of Jeffrey Rackover, the so-called jeweler to the stars, Oprah! Oprah! whose clients included Oprah Winfrey, J-Lo, even President Trump and his wife Melania. What could go wrong on the Upper East Side? But by the next afternoon, no one could find Joey. Not his father, not his friends. That's when everyone jumped on social media. I went on Facebook. I went on Instagram. Did you ever try to track down or retrace somebody's steps before using social media? No. You're in a panic and you're trying to find your, your friend. Sunday. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Joey's father, Pat, headed to the Grand Sutton with detectives from the NYPD and spotted on surveillance video his son walking into the building. I said to myself, I don't think he walked out of the building alive. When investigators zeroed in on the party host, James Rackover, they discovered a man with secrets and a dark past. James Rackover wasn't really James Rackover, was he? No. What do you think happened in apartment 4C? And Aaron is here with us now. Aaron, I, I want to talk about the social media aspect, but the only thing that I could think of as I watched your clip there is I've done that. In my younger years, I've gone out, partied in New York City, in London, in Paris, and everywhere. With strangers, and somebody has said at the bar is over. don't think it's going to happen to a young man. Let's just go to a, par a house party. See You'd what never think anything. And Joey in particular. Joey was one of these very friendly guys, um, great athlete, savvy. Um, I think that he met these three young women at the Gilded Lily, and he thought everything was fine. Again, like you, what's what's the problem going yeah. to? A, it's a nice address on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. He dis, he just didn't use his common sense. He knew nothing about these guys, and uh, there really is a bit of a mystery of exactly what happened. We just know he never left that apartment alive. So, how did social media play a role? In oh, this story? it was huge in this case. So. All of his friends realize he's missing on Sunday. And so they go on Instagram and they do the locator function. They see other people posting pictures. They actually find one of the women, she's in a picture, who had been at that party. She gives them one single name, Larry, and a phone number. They put that in Google. They get his Facebook page. He's one of the suspects. Wow. So before the end of Sunday, the police actually have names and numbers to call. What's really awful about this is that Joey was dead. These guys are trying to get rid of the body. The police are calling him, and they're acting like nothing's wrong. That's how fast this investigation started, within hours of Joey's disappearance. And this guy, James Rackover, uh, sort of a Patrick Bateman-type character. Yeah, he's by not James the Rackover of, at all. Of the picture that you showed us, at first I thought, oh, he must be Rackover's son. Looks just like him. Just like him, right, but he's not. No, he's not James Rackover at all. He's really James Bowden, and he's an ex-con with a long criminal history. 
Apparently, Jeffrey Rackover met him at a gym in New York. Um, his story is that he found this young man who could use some guidance. It's a father-son type of thing. That's what he says. Um, he allowed the young man to live with him and then four years later put him in an apartment of his own. Um, you know, James Rackover uh, was living in a $4,000 a month apartment. He had a job. Um, there's no way that Joey Cominelli would have realized who he was really dealing with. And I just, you know, I saw that clip of Joey going back into the apartment building. And I guess that, that he was still alive. So it's around 630 in the morning, right? Sunday morning, The girls right. had already left. He had just walked the girls with this Larry DeLeon. He'd walked the girls out to an Uber. The big question in my mind, and I think the big question in everybody's mind, is why did he go back in? He doesn't have his phone with him. He had lent it to a friend earlier in the night. Maybe he was making a phone call. All we know is that within that next hour, he was dead. Such a fascinating story. Aaron, thank you so much. Thanks, Glenn. You can watch the full 48 hours. What happened in apartment 4C tomorrow night at 10 p.m. on CBS?